This tutorial discusses the closed economy and how we can derive the national income accounting framework for our closed economy. So in this example, when we consider a closed economy, we assume that the country does not engage in trade. Therefore, there are no exports or imports, and as a result of this, there's no net export term, which we will see in an open economy framework. A closed economy, therefore, has three uses for the goods and services it consumes. We can either see households consuming some of the economy's output, firms and households also use some of the output for investment purposes, this is buying new houses in the case of households, or the purchase of new machinery in the case of firms. And we also see that the government buys some of the output for public purposes. So this could be the construction of a new road, or hiring new civil servants. This essentially results in the closed economy looking as such, where we have y is equal to c plus i plus g. Putting this simply in terms of consumption, Households receive a certain amount of income for their labour and also from their ownership of capital. When they receive this income, they must pay a certain amount of taxes to the government and after they've received this income, they then decide how much they will spend on consumption and how much they will choose to save. The total income in an economy is equal to Y. Okay. So GDP can be measured using the income or expenditure approach, and we know from using the income approach that total income is equal to Y. Individuals earn Y, and then the government taxes these income, this income. So although the government has a number of different types of tax at various different rates, for our purposes we're going to just consider tax as being equal to T. We are going to lump them all together. Therefore we can define income after the payment of tax as disposable income. This is the amount of income people can do it as they wish. When initially receiving income, tax is first deducted and then consumption and saving choices are made. We describe the relationship between consumption and disposable income using the consumption function, which essentially gives us the marginal propensity to consume. This is, given an extra euro of, an extra euro of income, how much consumption will increase by. If an individual is given one euro extra income, they can choose to consume between zero and one euro of that extra income. If they choose to consume at all, obviously they save none. If they choose not to consume any of it, they choose to save all of that one euro. And then everywhere in between. So if someone decides to consume 70 cent of that euro, they save 30 cent of the euro. In terms of investment, then, we see both firms and households purchasing investment goods. Firms buy investment goods to add to their stock of capital and also to replace capital as it wears out, whereas households buy new houses, which are also part of investment. We summarise the relationship between investment and the demand for investment using the interest rate. We do this by saying investment is equal to R, which is the interest rate times investment and this is referred to as the investment function. It slopes downwards because as the interest rate rises, the quantity of investment demand falls. So if we look at our investment function here, we see that essentially this is like a demand curve, where the real interest rate is the price of money, and the quantity demanded of the investment relates to this price. As price increases, the quantity of investment falls, and as price falls, the quantity of investment rises. So the interest rate will determine the amount of investment we have. The final element to consider is government purchases. And these are the third component of the closed economy. What we see within government purchases are various elements, such as the government buying new roads or land, and the government hiring new staff. But transfer payments also come into this. So transfer payments, such as unemployment benefit and state pensions, are also considered. But as no goods come into this, they're not defined as being included as G. So we see no transfer of goods or services for these payments. So if government purchases equals taxes minus transfer payments, then G is equal to T and the government has a balanced budget. Which in this taxation but frame, we're also going to include transfer payments. So we're going to say transfer payments to individuals are a positive form of tax. So T in this identity will take in the negative element of taking money out of the economy, so taking money away from individuals in taxation, 
and also the positive element of giving back transfer payments. We see in an instance if G exceeds T, then the government runs a budget deficit, which is funded by issuing government debt, that is essentially borrowing from the financial market. And if G is less than T, then the government runs a budget surplus, and it can use this budget surplus to repay outstanding debt or to loan on the international financial market.